For the PTE retail lecture question, you'll have to be able to do three things well. Listen to a lecture, understand the key components of the lecture, and explain what you just heard in your own words. Let's take a closer look at each of the pieces of this puzzle. Hi, I'm Sharon and I'm a PTE trainer here at Benchmark Education Solutions. Thank you for joining me for this video today. We're going to talk more about the retail lecture question type in the speaking section of the PTE exam. In this video, we're going to talk about how the question is scored, we'll go through an example together, and at the end I'll provide you with some important tips to remember. Let's get started with some useful information. You've probably heard that this question type is considered one of the most difficult questions on the PTE exam, but there is a large number of potential points you can earn. This is the fourth task in the speaking section, and on test day you'll have three or four of these questions. Besides your speaking skills, it will also test your listening skills. You will listen to a lecture or interview from around 60 to 90 seconds, and the topic is usually academic and abstract. The task involves retelling what you've listened to using your own words, so it's crucial that you take key notes and use them to help you while you speak. In our in-depth lesson, we will go over how to listen for keywords and what to write that will help you when speaking. For now, just know that you should listen actively for keywords. Let's take a look at what this question will look like on test day. You'll first start out with prep time, which is anywhere from 3 to 5 seconds. Prep is in quotation marks because it really isn't that much time at all. You will only look at a photograph on your screen during this time. However, this is a helpful step because it can prepare you for the topic. Remember, most of the topics will be abstract or academic, so a simple photo can really help prepare you for what you're about to listen to. Then, you'll listen to the lecture or interview for 60 to 90 seconds. You should be taking notes during this time. Then, you'll have 10 seconds to prepare your answer, and after that, you'll have 40 seconds to speak. Similar to the Describe Image question type, you should aim to finish your response in around 35 to 37 seconds so that you don't get cut off. Now that we've looked at the details, let's take a look at how this question is scored. This question features integrated scoring because it tests both your listening and your speaking skills. You'll receive partial credit depending on how you answer. The scoring is based on content, pronunciation, and oral fluency. Your content score ranges from 0 to 5 and depends on what you say and whether or not it is accurate based on the lecture or interview. Your pronunciation score also ranges from 0 to 5 and looks at how well you can be understood by a native English speaker. And last, your oral fluency score is also based on a scale from 0 to 5 and looks at the rhythm of your speech. So you can see that there are 15 possible points to earn from each question, and as we just saw, you could have three or four of these questions on test day. Let's look at each of these areas in a little more depth. We'll start with content. The maximum score for this category is 5, and basically means that you have described all elements of the presentation, including the characters, aspects and actions, relationships, underlying development, implications, and conclusions. This is really just another way to say that you've mentioned the key elements of the presentation and you understand how they're related to each other. The score of 4 is not all that different. With this score, you're describing the key points of the presentation and their relations, referring to implications or conclusions. With a score of 3, you are dealing with most points in the presentation. If you have a score of 2, you've dealt with only one key point and referred to an implication or conclusion. You have also shown a basic understanding of several core elements of the presentation. A score of 1 means that you've described some basic elements of the presentation, but you've not made clear any interrelations or implications. Basically, you've just described a few points. A score of 0, the lowest score, means that you have mentioned a few elements of the presentation, but not much else. 
So as you can see, there are varying levels to the content score. In our in-depth lesson, we talk more about how to find these key elements and how to connect them and expand on them. Next up is pronunciation. This involves the stress you place on words and how you pronounce your vowels, consonants, and double consonants. You'll be scored on a scale from 0 to 5, 0 being non-English and 5 being native-like. Let's look at this example. The speaker was discussing an overview of photosynthesis. Notice how I said that correctly with the appropriate stress on the words. If you were to pronounce photosynthesis like photosynthesis with an incorrect stress or pronouncing vowels incorrectly, this would negatively affect your pronunciation score. The last part of the scoring involves your oral fluency. This is the rhythm of your speech pauses, emphasis, and connected speech. It also ranges from 0 to 5, 0 being disfluent and 5 being native-like. Listen to me say this example. The speaker mentioned that all houses in the complex featured wood paneling. If I were to stop and start or start over after speaking half of the sentence, points would be deducted. This is why it's very important to just keep speaking once you start and don't pause for more than three seconds. Mostly because pauses will hurt your fluency score, but also because the microphone will stop recording if you pause for longer than three seconds. We'll talk about that later on in this video. Although the preparation time is helpful and should not be wasted, the listening time is the most crucial part while you're preparing your answer. Why is this? because you need to be actively listening and taking notes at the same time, so there's a lot to do. This is why you need to work on your active listening skills, meaning that you need to listen specifically for the main ideas and perhaps even some themes that you can hear, like the main topic of the lecture or its overarching theme. If you practice note-taking with keywords, you should be able to understand the main topic and supporting details. Remember, you should not be taking notes on everything you hear. That would be counterproductive and it would hurt your ability to listen actively to the lecture. Instead, you should be noting down keywords and phrases, which are the important words that will help you condense what you hear and cover the important points in your 40 second time limit. Now, as you prepare your answer and speak, here's the format you should follow. An introductory sentence, some body sentences, and a strong concluding sentence. This will help organize your answer and show the examiner that you can connect these points of the lecture. Again, I'll go into all of this more in our in-depth lesson. Are you ready to do an example together? Let's do a sample question in the same way you would do it on the exam. First, I want you to set up a way to record yourself while you're speaking. When you're ready, I'll show you an image and you can look at it for five seconds. Then I'll play the recording and you should be taking notes. When the recording is finished, I'll give you 10 seconds to organize your notes. Then I want you to turn on your recorder and speak for 40 seconds. I really do want you to record yourself speaking and don't skip that part. It's helpful for you because after the intensity of the speaking is over, you can listen to yourself and you might notice some things you could improve on. Are you ready? Here's the question. There have been three big changes in the family in the last generation. First, the definition of the family has changed. So we now have adoptive families, blended families, nuclear families living in separate houses, and divorced families living in the same house. Also, we have women have flooded into the workplace. Two-thirds of women now work outside of the home. And the last thing, which we don't talk about as much, is that men have come flooding into the parenting space, and dads are much more involved in families. And I think this new generation of parents, because they are much more active and much busier, technology, work, etc., they're much more interested in solutions. So that the old debates, be strict like the Chinese or be lax like the French, are no longer satisfying for them. They want results, they want to know what works, and they want to be able to do it in their families. I'm the father of identical twin girls, and my wife works, and we were incredibly chaotic. We just felt lost and out of control. We would turn to our parents, but their experience was so outdated as to be almost quaint. We'd Facebook our friends, but they're just as clueless as we are. And then 
we went looking for results and the traditional solutions just seemed very tired and out of date. How did you do? Before we look at the sample answer, let's take a look at the notes I took and compare them to the notes you took. Three big changes, family. One, definition changed, adopted, blended, nuclear. Two, women in workplace, two-thirds work outside home. Three, men parenting. New generation parents are more active more interested in solutions, want results. Father of identical twins, wife works, yields chaos. Traditional solutions are out of date. Next, notice how I used symbols like arrows and numbers. I also abbreviated words when I could. You should use a system that works for you. The more you practice, the more you should be able to understand what works best for you. And here's the photo you saw. Think about how the photo relates to the audio. The photo was of a family enjoying some time together, so you should have already been prepared for the topic. Now let's look at my answer. The lecture was about three major changes to family life. First, the speaker mentioned that the definition of families has changed and includes terms like adopted, blended, and nuclear to describe new situations. Next, he stated that more women are now in the workplace, which affects the dynamic. The third change is that men are parenting more. Afterwards, he talked about a new generation of parents that are more active and interested in solutions to problems. In fact, he mentioned that he is a father of identical twins and that things were chaotic. However, he concluded by saying that traditional solutions are out of date. Notice how my answer is organized. It starts out with what the lecture was about and then describes the various main points before going into the conclusion. Let's look quickly at the words and phrases I used to help me organize my answer. The lecture was about, first the speaker mentioned, next he stated, the third change, afterwards he talked about, in fact he mentioned that, however he concluded by saying, of course, we'll go into formats and strategy with lots of examples more in our in-depth lesson. How did you do with this sample question? Be sure to listen to your recording and analyze it. Compare it to the sample answer and see if there's any way you can improve. Now, before we wrap up this video, I want to leave you with some important tips to remember. First, make sure the microphone is placed well so your voice can be heard clearly. This should be done before you start speaking. Check out our video that talks more about the best way to position your microphone. Start speaking immediately after the beep. You don't want to lose time, so make sure that you're ready. Use your listening time wisely. As you've just seen, there's a lot to do as you listen, so focus on the key ideas as you listen and take notes. And as you take notes and speak, you should remember your solid structure. What does this mean? Take notes in an organized fashion that will help you speak in a structured way. Remember, you want to have an introduction sentence, body sentences, and a concluding sentence. Press the next button soon after finishing so you can get started on your next question and manage your time well. And speaking of timing, keep the timing in mind. You don't want to speak all the way until the 40 second mark, which is why you want to finish within the given time. Basically, you'll see the timer on your screen and you'll be able to understand when your time is coming close to an end. Make sure to finish just a few seconds before the 40 second mark. Shoot for 37 seconds maximum so that your answer doesn't get cut off in the end. And last, keep in mind that the recorder stops if you pause for longer than 3 seconds, so make sure not to do that. I hope this overview of the retail lecture question type helped you begin to feel more comfortable as you learn the best way to answer. If you'd like to practice more retail lecture questions and learn more about the PTE exam, check out our website and watch our in-depth lesson with full examples and strategy and our helpful do's and don'ts for this question type. 
You can also practice retail lecture questions with an experienced PTE trainer in real time with our PTE Speaking Mock Test. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.